Hello, Average Engineers. Today I'm going to ramble about a topic that's probably going to make some people mad because I'm going to kind of poo-poo on their favorite tools, but the idea is I'm going to show what something is like in the real world and not what the talking heads say who have never actually done anything. Today I'm going to talk about DuckDB and Pi Iceberg and AWS Lambda and Cloudflare R2. That's a lot to put together, but honestly, that's what it's going to take to work with a production Apache Iceberg system because you know what? Iceberg kind of sucks and you have no choice but to do this sort of thing. What I really wanted to focus on in this video was DuckDB and Iceberg, Apache Iceberg. Why? Because those are two tools that a lot of people talk a lot about. Everybody says they're the best thing in the world. You have to use them, you know, and we're going to see the real thing today. Is it really that awesome? Again, there's really nothing inherently wrong with Apache Iceberg or DuckDB. Clearly, they're strong contenders in the data world, but, you know, I've just had a lot of issues with them in the past. And when you're talking about building production data systems, you know, this stuff matters. So I want to show you an example of something. Basically, what you would have to do to make DuckDB work with Apache Iceberg in a real live system where you're reading and writing data. There are a lot of people that say, oh yeah, it sounds like an awesome stack. I bet you can do that. Well, can you? I did a video not too long ago in a blog post about Cloudflare R2 and and that's important because to work with Apache Iceberg, you have to have a catalog. That catalog has to be available in the cloud. And there is a lot of open source options, but they are insanely hard to set up and deploy. They require servers and all this kind of crap. We just want something easy that's ready to go, easy to use. And surprisingly enough, Cloudflare offers an R2 data catalog, which is an Iceberg compliant catalog. And you can use R2 storage. And it's very simple to use. We'll kind of use that in the background as the storage and the catalog for our iceberg table which it sucks that we have to do that to read and write, but we have to, we don't have a choice. It's not like Delta Lake. The big idea here is instead of using something heavy like Spark or BigQuery, Snowflake, whatever, to ingest data into a lake house, we can you know, sometimes use extremely lightweight architecture to do incoming data processing, so, you know, and then landing it in somewhere. So you have to do a little bit of ETL, a little data manipulation, and you gotta write results out. It's kind of the idea. Can you actually do this with DuckDB? and Apache Iceberg, does it work? Just to set the stage a little bit, I wanted to show you here is my Cloudflare R2 data bucket. If you're unfamiliar with data storage on Cloudflare, go ahead and just go Google that and read that. They've got some super simple setup there. Pretty much similar to S3, you can set up buckets, have storage, etc. Once you have a Cloudflare bucket set up, you can go ahead and enable data catalog on that bucket like you see uh, me doing here. Basically this enables an Iceberg catalog on that bucket that has a URI to it, etc that we'll need to have something talk to the iceberg table. And what I would like to do is go ahead and create an iceberg table at this location now that we have a catalog set up and ready to work on a Cloudflare. And we're going to use the Divi Bike Trip open source data set. You can see it here. You Google it, check it out. Basically, it looks like this. It's just a bunch of information about bike rides. You can see ride ID, ride type, started at, ended at, blah, blah, blah. The first thing someone would do is say, oh, DuckDB, it's the best tool other. Iceberg is awesome. The first thing we do is we need to create an iceberg table with DuckDB that we can land our data in. This should be super simple, right? DuckDB is sweet. So is Iceberg. Let's go ahead and do this. Oh, wait a second. DuckDB doesn't have right support for Iceberg. Seriously? There's an open GitHub issue. They don't have right support. DuckDB doesn't have right support for Apache Iceberg. Give me a break. We just hit a major roadblock we haven't even started yet. How many data managers out there who've never done anything think, oh yeah, we should use DuckDB. It's totally awesome. Oh, let's use Apache Iceberg. I hear everybody talking about it. Wait a second. You can't even write data using DuckDB to Apache Iceberg? That's correct. You cannot. You know, I see that as part of my job to be the one that stands up in the midst of all the lemmings locking on saying, blah, 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 and yeah, and Iceberg's the best. So it's DuckDB. Use Iceberg. It's great. It has lots of support. DuckDB, it's awesome. It's the perfect tool for everything. Well, apparently not. This is the perfect example of solving problems on the ground in real life. Let's pretend we're just a lowly data engineer. We have some super smart boss who's been on LinkedIn and says, hey, DuckDB is awesome. And so is Apache Iceberg. We'll simply, you have to use these two technologies get it done. Well, we just saw we don't have right support with DuckDB for Apache Iceberg. What do you do? Okay, we can work our way around this. We'll just use PyIceberg to create the Iceberg table. 
I mean, it's ridiculous that DuckDB cannot write to Iceberg, but we'll use PyIceberg to do this. Here's some easy code to do this. Of course, you can see my warehouse ID, my catalog for the Iceberg URI. We got this from the Cloudflare R2 catalog setup that you saw earlier. Those are just those values. Again, we can just import PyIceberg catalog rest, connect our rest catalog to that endpoint. We can import Pi Arrow and DuckDB, even though we won't use that right now. And basically we could connect that catalog, create a default namespace, basically create a Pi Arrow schema, as you see here. This is how Iceberg, Pi Iceberg works. You have to pass a Pi Arrow schema, or you should. It's an easy way to make a table. You can see me creating a table. And again, remember we're using the Divi trip data, but we want to do some transformation to it before we write it to iceberg so i'm basically writing a field for trip date the writable type the number of rides and the average trip length that happens so basically per day how many rides are happening per day what's the average length of the trip that's happening and you can see me calling catalog create table daily trip metrics and i'm passing the schema we just talked about all with pi iceberg too bad i couldn't have used duckdb to do that this is one nice thing about cloudflare's r2 iceberg setup it's very easy to use you can go ahead if we head back over to our r2 storage we can see that we, of course we have data inside our data catalog now which we would expect again we had to write completely on pi iceberg to get the initial table set up since duckdb has no write support but never fear we will use duckdb eventually duckdb will come into play transforming our csv data that trip data we saw from s3 calculated under metrics but then we'll obviously have to roll it back out to something else before we write to this table again this is a production like environment so we need code that's going to run on a lambda so we're going to head go ahead and create an aws lambda here that will hold our corresponding code that we will eventually write we're also going to add a trigger to it saying when a csv file that trip data hits this certain bucket i want to trigger this lambda does that make sense yes okay so now we have a ice ice baby lambda with a trigger for a csv file that shows up when any file shows up at confessions of a data guy slash ice ice baby with a dot csv prefix so this lambda is going to trigger so if we want to run an aws lambda here's what i typically do i make a docker file to hold my lambda code again you can see here's a little example aws provides pre-built python lambdas we'll use that as our base image and then we'll basically copy in all our code that we're going to write We'll pip install a couple tools like DuckDB, Pi Iceberg, Pyro, Boto3, whatever we need, you know what I'm saying? And then we'll go ahead and copy that Docker file once we're done with it up in the code and everything. We'll make an ECR, Elastic Container Registry, in AWS to hold that image and we'll kind of connect that to our Lambda and off to the races. Once it's out there, once our image is created, hooray, now we can actually get to writing our code. Okay, there's a lot going on here, but let's talk about it. Again, we were tasked with using DuckDB and Iceberg, but DuckDB doesn't have write support, but we will use it for reading the data, as you can see. Calculate metrics, what's it take, a bucket and a key, because remember our Lambda triggers, and part of that Lambda trigger, some of the arguments to Lambda is the bucket and the key of the file that landed in the bucket. And of course, we say with data, we can select the ride ID, ride type. We're going to cast to a timestamp as started at, cast to an ended at as timestamp as well. We're going to read from CSV our S3 bucket and key. Of course, you can notice we baked in our AWS keys there. Probably not a good idea, but you know, we love spicy. That's how we like it. And now that we have that base data set, we can go ahead and start our actual transformation with DuckDB saying, you know, Here's our trip date, I'm gonna cast it to a date. Here's our ride type. And we're gonna go ahead and count the number of rides per day, cast it as an int. We're also gonna do a date diff by the minute between the started at and ended at dates. And then we're gonna to go to cast that as an int. So we just want basically rounded to the minute, how long was the average trip? Of course, we did the average of those for the day. Does that make sense? So every ride for that day, do a date diff on it for the minute, get the average, there we go. Group by the date and writable type and return a arrow data frame. Arrow is important because remember DuckDB cannot write directly to Iceberg. So we will push it to an arrow from which point we can pass it to Pi Iceberg, if that makes sense. Of course, you've seen this code before. We'll connect our catalog to our catalog on the R2. Seen that code before. Go ahead and make a table. So catalog load table, bam. Got the catalog, load our table, daily trip metrics. Take that 
table and append metrics to it. What is metrics? That is a Pyro data frame. We can just say table dot append metrics and bam, now we are using DuckDB to crunch and read CSV data, calculate metrics, and using PyIceberg to pass that data back into the iceberg table. I did run into one small problem with DuckDB. It did not like running inside an AWS Lambda, which is strange because you'd think, I don't know, AWS Lambdas are pretty popular. DuckDB seems to be popular. And of course, it doesn't work right. Apparently, you have to add, if you're reading stuff from S3 inside a Lambda with DuckDB, can't find home directory. What is this crap? Oh, well. All we had to do is import export an environment variable called home equaling slash temp, and apparently that makes DuckDB work on an AWS Lambda reading an S3 file. Whatever. Let's go ahead and see if that worked. You can see here is our code to go ahead, go ahead and connect to that catalog. We're going to load that table, scan it to arrow, and print it. What do we see? We see the scheme and we see data. It worked. Man, that's kind of a lot of work. I don't know what you think. I don't know. What did we prove? We proved you can build lightweight lakehouse data processing infrastructure that runs in the cloud. We used an AWS Lambda. We packaged it in a Docker image. We used DuckDB, which is supposedly fast and versatile and easy to use, except it can't write the iceberg. And it can't run inside a Lambda very well without weird stuff. Anyways, we saw Cloudflare's R2 data catalog. That was easy to set up and use, no problem. And of course, we saw Pi Iceberg. We had to use that to write to the iceberg table because DuckDB can't. I don't know. I just did that to make a point, honestly, you know. I see people talking all the time about whatever, you know. DuckDB's awesome. I get it. It's SQL. Everybody thinks it's awesome. Everybody's talking about iceberg. It's the best thing ever. Maybe, maybe not. Anyone who's honestly used it compared to something like Delta Lake, yeah, it's not there yet. I mean, these major tools like DuckDB, you can't even write to it yet. How is it awesome? I don't know. That's the real world. I guess we'll just have to deal with it.